Today I'm going to show you three easy tips that you can action straight away to transform your espresso martinis from a watery, unbalanced drink with no texture into a delicious, moussey and rich espresso martini. At the end of the video, I'll show you two espresso martinis, one which follows these tips and one which doesn't, and you can see what a massive difference these tips make, so stay tuned for those. And now, let's make some coffee cocktails. All right, welcome back to the Coffee Cocktail channel, everyone. I'm Dan Fellows, and today we're talking about the espresso martini. So I actually won the World Coffee and Good Spirits Championship twice, which focuses on coffee and cocktails, just like this channel. And if you want to level up your cocktail skills or your coffee skills, you can also check out my full length courses, which I'm going to link in the description that you can access either through Skillshare or Patreon. I also spent a full month trying to perfect the espresso martini. And before I talk about what this video is, I should talk about what it isn't. So this isn't a how to make an espresso martini video, although I do have exactly that, which I'll put here, which you can watch first. And once you've seen that, you can come back and then what we should talk about is what this video is. So even if you follow that template, which should give you really good results, I do see some common mistakes which are extremely easy to fix with little to no effort, which is what we're gonna to do today. So without further ado, let's move on to the first tip. So the first tip, which is really powerful, is to freeze our spirits and our glassware ready for making the drink. So the reason this is our number one tip is because it's so, so easy. All you do is put these in the freezer for a couple of hours beforehand, particularly the spirit, and this will make a massive difference to the final drink. So this is really powerful and has kind of two key benefits. First of all, using our frozen spirits allows us to use hot espresso, which has some really good kind of flavor benefits. So the hot espresso is freshly brewed, it's at its peak aroma and its peak kind of flavor and its peak freshness, which obviously is gonna make a better espresso martini. And second of all, second of all, by using a frozen spirit, we can then counteract the hot temperature of the espresso. So when we shake the drink, we don't get too much dilution. So if we have too much dilution, it'll be too watery and you don't get the coffee intensity in the final drink. So flavor, texture, intensity can all be massively improved by using our frozen spirits and also a frozen glass will make the drink nice and cold, which obviously we want. So that's number one. And now let's look at number two. So tip number two is to use great ingredients, especially the coffee. And key to this is kind of not thinking of espresso as one flavor and one ingredient, but think of coffee as a spectrum of flavors that can have any different flavor profile that you want to add into the final drink. Fundamentally, choose a coffee you love because this is going to be the dominant flavor in your espresso martini. For the coffee element of the drink, I always go with 18 to 20 grams of coffee for a 40 gram yield. And ideally you do want to brew this on an espresso machine. I tend to go for kind of 30 to 32 seconds with a kind of straight nine bar extraction, or if I'm brewing on the Slayer Espresso, I look for around about a 50 second total contact time. This gives us a really delicious espresso to start with, and then we can build upon later. So obviously, ideally an espresso martini will have an espresso at its core, but I do appreciate not everyone has access to an espresso machine, but worry not, we've got a few options here. So you could use something like the Wakako Pico Presso, which is a really good kind of portable espresso machine, which gives you kind of close to espresso results. You could use an AeroPress with a fellow Prismo filter, which again gives you kind of high intensity coffee, or you could even, curveball, go to your favorite coffee shop, get your favorite espresso, take it away, bring it home and make an espresso martini. So now we've talked about how we're gonna brew our coffee, we need to choose a coffee. And with this, the world is your oyster. You can pretty much make an espresso martini with any flavor profile within the spectrum of coffee. And as long as you pair it with a spirit, which complements it, and a sweetener, which also complements it, you're gonna be making a delicious drink. I'm gonna be going with this coffee from Lucid Coffee Roasters, which is a Brazilian coffee, kind of traditional, has those kind of chocolatey notes, kind of nutty characteristics and low acidity, plenty of body. And I'm gonna be pairing this with vodka. But I've done lots of variations on the espresso martini. We did a tropical espresso martini, which I'll link at the end of the video, which had a really kind of funky tropical espresso paired with homemade spiced rum, coconut, and pineapple. And I recently also did the breakfast espresso martini, which is inspired by the breakfast martini. So we had marmalade in there, we had gin, we had homemade zero waste orange liqueur, and completely different. And both of these videos I'll link at the end of the video, so you can watch those next. So our third and final tip is to shake the drink hard with lots of ice. And in the words of B. Bradsell, whose dad Dick actually invented the espresso martini, you wanna shake it like you hate it. So in a second, I'll show you my very simple shaking technique that's really effective, but you also wanna make sure you're using plenty of ice, not just like a small amount, and you wanna make sure it's frozen nice and hard. So I like these around about three centimeter cubed cubes, which have been in the freezer. So contrary to what you might think, using more ice actually gives us more control over the dilution of the drink, allowing us to get a really kind of snap chill on the drink and then shake to get that texture. Whereas if you use less ice, particularly if it started melting, as soon as you add the liquid, it's gonna really dilute 
and by the time you've shaken it up to get that texture you want, it's going to be really kind of watery and you'll get a really strange white foam on top of the drink. So now we've got our three tips and our three kind of easy fixes. I'm going to make two espresso martinis to compare them, one of which will have followed all these tips and one of them won't, just to show you the massive difference we're going to get in the taste and texture of our espresso martinis. So for our two espresso martinis, this one is going to follow all our tips and this one is going to not follow them, so you can see the huge difference between the two. So based on tip one, which is freezing our spirits and our glassware, I'm going to add vodka to this one to pair with our nice kind of Brazilian coffee. And this is going to be frozen vodka on this side, whereas our other espresso martini is going to be using room temperature vodka and served in a room temperature glass. Based on tip two, I'm using freshly brewed, high quality espresso over here, which is going to be our lucid Brazilian coffee with those really nice kind of hazelnutty chocolate notes. Whereas over here, I'm using slightly stale, although still hot coffee, which has been open for a little bit too long, but just isn't optimal. Both of these are going to be finished with 20 mils of our coffee saccharum syrup, which if you don't know how to make, I'll link above. And also one gram of saline solution per our espresso martini template. Finally, based on tip three, this one's going to be shaken over lots of frozen ice, whereas this one is going to be shaken over just a little bit of ice, which has started to melt, so not ideal. So what we're going to do now is shake these both up, the first of which being our kind of lightly shaken poor espresso, which is all at room temperature. So I often see shaking not being vigorous enough, not really giving the drink the texture it needs. And you do need to be nice and confident when you shake a cocktail. This is starting to get a little bit cold, but we're not shaking it hard enough. And then what we're gonna do with the second one is shake it properly. But before we do that, I'm gonna serve a lightly shaken espresso martini in a room temperature glass. And you'll see the texture of this one. So I'm just going to pour that straight out and fine strain any shards. And it's kind of sad, kind of tepid, has a little bit of foam on top, but it's not really any kind of quality. Whereas our second espresso martini, which is going to be shaken with lots of ice, using great quality espresso and frozen vodka, is going to have a very, very different texture. So I usually edit out some of the shake because you don't need to see the whole thing, but today I'm going to show you the whole thing in real time. And you want to shake the cocktail from end to end, nice and hard and very confidently. So, go like this. So, it only takes around about 10 to 15 seconds. You can see the shake is frosted up really nicely. You can already see this is gonna have far superior texture. So, I'm gonna serve this one in a frozen glass this time. And here we have our vastly improved espresso martini using frozen spirits in a frozen glass, great quality espresso and ingredients, and shaken really hard with lots of good quality ice. So let's give the two a taste. So here's our kind of sad looking, lightly shaken espresso martini. Doesn't really bring any positive notes to the coffee. It's kind of bitter in a weird way. Doesn't have that nice kind of moussey texture. Whereas this one, which has followed all of our tips, looks different. And it's just everything you want in an espresso martini. Coffee forward, really, really cold, really kind of moussey, silky texture, and just delicious. So I really encourage you to try this. I think it will make a massive difference to your espresso martinis. If you do so, let me know in the comments how it goes, or you can also tag me on Instagram at danfellows1. If you found value in this, make sure you subscribe to the channel, which you can do by clicking here, and also check out those courses through Skillshare and Patreon, which are linked below. And if you want to riff on your espresso martini to make it something completely different, you can click here to watch the tropical espresso martini, or you can click here to watch the breakfast espresso martini. So I'm going back to this, and I hope you enjoy the next video. Cheers, everyone.